Good morning, good morning, or good afternoon, depending upon what time you are listening. Today is Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. This time space sequence we call November the 12th, 2019. This is Sean Speaks, and I'll be presenting to you the blog post from the website um, entitled Chaos to Peace. Are we raising humans or robots? Part one. Our affirmation for today I am unique and special. I am unique and special. If I took a poll and asked who would prefer a normal life over a chaotic life, I would probably correctly guess that most people would choose a normal, peaceful life. No one wants a traumatic life full of drama. No one wants their relationships to fall apart regularly. No one wants their financial stability to fall apart. No one wants to be too different from the crowd. And no one wants their child to be too different from other children. We want a peace of mind in those areas. So we follow various blueprints for relationships, financial stability, raising children, etc. laid out to us in our attempts to find peace and normalcy in our lives. But if peace is our ultimate goal of life, where does the chaos of invention fit? Doesn't invention and reinvention mean challenge, trial and error, trouble, disruption, growth and change? Most great changes in our lives occur not after peace, but after some very chaotic experiences. Let's take, for example, my daughter, who is now 13, on the honor roll and who is on her way to becoming a lacrosse superstar. She didn't always demonstrate these abilities. I can remember every day getting off of work at 3 p.m. so I could be home, chalk in hand, at the blackboard, in our ready-made classroom, home classroom, ready to teach her what I already knew she didn't understand from her elementary teachers. I did this year after year for about four years. I dreaded the day she had to take the star test. She hadn't taken it yet, but I was already dreading it in my mind. I was so afraid of her failing, being held back, and not being able to graduate or having the stigma of not being able to pass that darn standardized test. Based on her performance scores, she just didn't perform like the other kids, and this had me so scared, so I took her to the doctor. I can remember when the doctor told me my daughter had ADHD, along with some other diagnosis, and prescribed her some medicine that was supposed to help normalize her. I knew it. I thought something is wrong with her. She's not normal. My husband and I tag team and got her to her psychiatric appointments. And I made sure she took her medicine every day. This medicine to normalize her behavior and to normalize her mind. But one day I read the label warnings. But one day I read the label warnings. And there was a sentence that said a possible side effect is that it could stunt her height. This sentence stood out to me as if it hadn't been on the label warnings of the previous refill. I have my daughter taking medicine that will cause her not to grow as tall as she naturally would because I want her to be like everyone else so that she could pass a standardized test. I have my daughter taking medicine that will cause her not to grow as tall as she naturally would because I want her to be like everyone else so that she can pass a standardized test. WTF? That thought sucker punched me in the gut. I essentially wanted a standard. I wanted to standardize my daughter instead of embracing her uniqueness because 15 people on the state board of education that I don't even know 
and who don't know my daughter said she isn't standard enough. I went into a short silence as I was waiting in line at the neighborhood Starbucks and I sighed with tears rolling down my eyes. I didn't see what my emotional need to have her conform was possibly doing to her mental need to just be allowed to grow and be unique. I immediately called my husband and said, I am not letting our daughter take that medicine again. And she is not going back to that doctor. And if she fails the standardized test, oh, well. He said, whatever you say. No more pressure of conformity, thinking that is going to give me peace. I am going to set my daughter's mind and my own free from the must do's of other people's standards. So instead of the medicine, when all day testing came around, I asked her if she would like a cup of coffee. She said yes. I took her to get her favorite Frappuccino each day before the test. I don't know if she passed that standardized test that year or not because I was too busy freeing my mind from the mental box of standardized testing. Also, I stopped coming home at 3 p.m. and I stopped helping her every day with her schoolwork. I told her if she fails, it will be okay. I told her if it's time to figure out, I told her that it's time to figure out who she wanted to be as a student and whoever she chooses to be, that is the level of effort she would need to give. And I would be there to help her if she needed me to. I had to be willing to see the F's or the D's or the C's and not freak out while giving her the space she needed as she learned who she wanted to be as a student. That was a chaotic time for my daughter and I. But on objective look back, the chaos was more in my mind and in my resistance to my then now. I became aware that I needed to free my mind from the chaos of raising a robot and step into the freedom of overseeing the growth of a unique human being. Our affirmation for today, I am unique and special. Stay tuned for part two of this two-part series on Friday. Ashe free thinkers, Ashe. May what you say manifest. Thank you so much for listening to the audio broadcast podcast presented to you by freeyourthinkingmind.com. Please definitely go over to the website and subscribe and share. Please check us out on our podcast at freeyourthinkingmind.podbean.com and subscribe and share to our YouTube channel at FYTM Network. Ashe family, Ashe, may what you say manifest. Happy Tuesday.